Hello friends! Welcome to another weekend reading vlog. It's currently uh, 5 o'clock on Friday after work and it's a long weekend. So I actually have Monday off um, for a public holiday um, and yeah I feel like I really need it. I feel like I've just been like really like burnt out on like life. Um, by the time this video goes up you'll probably have noticed I have barely uploaded. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've uploaded in like over a week now. Um, I haven't filmed in over two weeks so um, but anyway point is I thought I would do some vlogging this weekend because I'm actually reading again. Um, and I'm currently reading The Black Coast by Mike Brooks, which is a debut classic fantasy type of thing. But it's like a classic fantasy, but it's almost like a spin on the classic fantasy because it follows a lot of like the classic fantasy tropes. And it has that kind of like very classic comforting feel. However, I like that the main conflict in this isn't actually like war or conflict. It's actually like reconciliation and trying to reconcile two very different cultures. And that's kind of the setup of this book. You have multiple different like nations, but two, the two main characters we follow, there's a couple characters um, that are like outside of the core two um, that have side storylines. And one of them is actually from a third nation. Um, but the two that we follow, basically we have one nation that are, at, at this place called the Black Keep and another nation that used to like constantly raid and invade this country. Um, but now they, due to reasons, um, their homeland is like no longer a viable place for them to live. So they actually need to settle in this place now. But instead of invading them and raiding them this time around, they decided to try and settle and make peace. And so that's kind of the setup of this book. It's really interesting. I'm about maybe like just under a third of the way through at this point. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I think one thing that I was kind of like hesitant about and be and I think a lot of it has to do with like, because they used a junk boat as like the picture on the cover. Um, I was kind of concerned that there would be like an Asian inspired nation. And like, you all know how I feel about white people writing Asian inspired fantasies. Um, so far, it's not quite like that. Like there are definitely like influences in cer in certain elements of the cultures that I would say could potentially have been influenced by East Asian cultures. But like overall, like I would not say either of these cultures feel particularly like a particular culture um, so far. So I don't I don't really have a problem with it. And yeah, so far I really like it. The writing isn't really interesting. I really like the use of language in this book. So they obviously speak different languages, and they're not like like fake made up languages. Um, the author does use English, but with like different sentence structure. And it's very interesting because you see people in the story speaking a language that is not their native tongue. And you can kind of tell there's like dialects, there's accents. It's very interesting. Like it, the, the use of language in this book is really creative, really well done. Um, the third nation that I mentioned, they actually are a queer normative nation. They actually use like all of the gendered pronouns we have in English, plus like they, them pronouns. Plus they have like five tones that they use for like high, I think they have like, they have like the neutral tone and then they have like a high feminine, low feminine, high masculine, low masculine, masculine, and then an agender tone for every single word. So you have some characters who use like, um, I believe there's a character that uses like she, her pronouns, for example, but it is with a one of the masculine tones. I think it's low masculine tones. And then you have other characters who um, use the like neutral tone um, and use they them pronouns and then other characters who use the agender tone and use like they them pronouns. I feel like it's just like a really interesting way to kind of explore different genders in a way that is like on a spectrum rather than a strict binary. I think, I don't know, I, I obviously can't speak to that. Um, that's it's not really my place to say like whether that's good representation or not. I do know that the author is queer. I don't know what he identifies as, but I do know he uses the he, he him pronouns. Um, but he does identify as queer, as far as I know. But anyway, I will keep you posted on what I think about this book. I am really enjoying it. Um, I think it's a really easy read and really comforting. I think if you like kind of like the Brandon Sanderson type of books, um, you would probably really like this so far anyway. Um, it's a little less action packed than say like Actually, you know what? Brandon Sanderson is not that action packed. Like his books, I'd, I'd say like Mistborn is pretty action packed, but like, like Well of Ascension is not that action packed. And actually, Well of Ascension is my favorite book in the Mistborn trilogy um, of that series. Um, I would say like in terms of pacing, in terms of like the level of like action to to to, to kind of like politics and just like day to day life kind of situation, it kind of reminds me a lot of Stormlight Archive actually. Um, which, if you don't know. You, 
the thing is, I feel like people watching my channel might think that I hate that series and that I hate Brandon Sanderson because I hated Oathbringer so, so much. And I didn't really love Rhythm of War either. Um, but <laughs> prior to BookTube, last year, not even last year, two years ago now, when I read the first two book in the Stormlight Archive series, those were actually the books that got me back into reading and got me back into adult fantasy. And I just like, they just hold such a special place in my heart. I actually love those two books. They're both five star books for me. But like, because I didn't really like the last two books and I really hated the third book. Um, I can I can no longer in good conscience recommend that series to people, which re makes me really sad because I think the first two books are just excellent. Um, but this is kind of giving me the same feels as Stormlight Archive a little bit. So, and, and like the Stormlight Archive that I loved. So I'm actually really enjoying this so far. But yeah, I do also like want to start an audiobook at some point. I have been playing my Switch a lot, um, but I <laughs> recently got uh, Breath of the Wild. Nicole from Nicole and Her Books, um, she has been telling me that this is the best game ever and I have been reluctant to, to get into it. A, because like I'm just a really bad gamer and I just know it's a really hard game and it's really overwhelming and I just like, even though it is, it's it's actually one of the games that I was like, I, I'm really intrigued by it and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get a Switch, but I once I got the Switch, I kind of chickened out and I didn't actually end up getting Breath of the Wild. And then I also was like, fundamentally, I was like, I refuse to pay full price for a game that came out in 2017. I just refuse. I refuse. But anyway, I found a used copy um, from some random guy who was selling it for like um, $30 less than, than, than the new retail price. So I just picked it up and I've been playing it. And it's actually one of the rare games that I play with soundtrack on because it's not really like music because I don't really like game music but Breath of the Wild is mostly like ASMR type music type sounds like it's like very like ambiance and like footsteps the wind the rain you know that kind of thing and so I really enjoy it and I find it really calming but um point is I've been playing a lot on my switch but I haven't been listening to audiobooks like I usually do because that's what I usually do when I play on my switch um but I do want to start another audiobook soon I don't know actually maybe I'm just burnt out on audiobooks I've been list I listened to so many audiobooks last month like it's actually wild <laughs> um I pretty much was exclusively listening to audiobooks for like the entire month of like June and July for, for most of June and July, I pretty much only exclusively listen to audiobooks. So maybe I'm a little burnt out, but I do have a couple of books coming in the mail tomorrow that I ordered that I really want to start on. Um, they're two Keigo Higashino books and Keigo, Higash Keigo Higashino has become one of my new favorite authors. I really like the first two books that I listened to on audio um, in the Detective Galileo series. But the third book, I tried starting it on audio, but it's a different narrator. And it's really disappointing because I really loved the narrator for the first two books. Um, and I don't think the narrator is bad per se for the third book. I just like was really disappointed because I really liked the first two. Um, but I did find a used copy for 10 bucks. So I did pick it up. <laughs> I also picked up his other book that's not a mystery, The Miracles of General Namiya House, I think it's called. Um, and I actually have had this one on my radar longer than the mysteries to read because I actually really want to watch the live action but I'm one of those like pretentious bitches who refuses to watch movies and tv shows before I read the book so I've, I've wanted to read the book for a while now because I wanted to watch the movie um so I finally ended up picking it up because it just came out in paperback and so I should have two Keiko Higashino books coming in tomorrow so hopefully I will start one of them tomorrow as well um but I've been really enjoying his writing and I've been really enjoying those books um and that kind of book so um hopefully I'll start that but yeah as for today I am just going to continue reading The Black Coast and I will check in at some point maybe probably tomorrow at this point knowing me um but yeah I will see you at the next check-in. Good morning friends happy Saturday it's currently 11.17. I unexpectedly am going to be spending the day out, so I actually don't know how much time I will be spending reading, but it's just going to be a chill day. I'm just going to be hanging out with my cousins, um, and yeah, that'll be my day, basically. We're just going to be playing video games, probably. I'll bring my Switch with me, um, but I also will probably bring my book. Um, so I did end up reading a bit yesterday. I did host some sprints in the end and we did get some reading done. So I'm on page 300 now. I'm almost halfway through the book. Really, really enjoying it so far. Um, there are dragons in this book. Taylor from Made Between the Pages, she's the one who actually like introduced me to this book. I will link her review down below if you want to watch it. Um, she gives like a really good overview of the book. Um, and she kind of described the dragon situation as kind of like a how to train your dragon kind of vibe. 
And I kind of get that. And I really, I really love the dragons in this book. My new books, my mystery books have not arrived yet. So I will probably start those tonight when I get those. Um, and what else? Yeah, I didn't end up reading as much as I wanted to yesterday because I ended up watching all three episodes of uh, Love is Blind After the Altar. And I forgot how frustrating those people are. Like, that show is trash and I love it. But like, those, those people, they're all so toxic and problematic. Uh, Lauren and Cameron aside, everyone else on that show is terrible. That being said, I know that everyone kind of hates Carlton, but I actually think that like personally for me, I think in that situation between Lauren and Cameron, I think both of them behaved quite poorly. I didn't like how Lauren was trying to like almost downplay the biphobia he was facing because let's face it, like the level of biphobia in, in that show is disgusting. Like I almost, I, I actually forgot how disgusting it was and it like actually makes me feel sick because it's like, it's just so typical. And like granted, Carlton's not a great person either. Like I think he has, Carlton needs to go to therapy. That's what he needs. But like the fact of the matter is, is that he experienced an extreme level of biphobia, both from his castmates, from his ex-fiance, from the showrunners and the way they edited that show and from the general public. And like the fact that like, I don't know, it, it really rubbed me the wrong way that Lauren was like, yeah, but can you not see it from like Diamond's side? No, he doesn't need to see it from her side. Like, I'm sorry, in that situation, that, that really pissed me off. The fact that the show last year made him apologize to her for the fact that she was being biphobic to him. I don't know, like, it makes me so angry. Anyway, I will not go on a love is blind rant. I could rant about the biphobia in, in that whole situation all day long. Um, but, um, but yeah, regardless, the point is everyone on that show is trash. Again, except for Lauren and Cameron, uh, they're adorable. Um, but aside from them, everyone else is an absolute toxic mess. Like I, please, I hope they're all like going to therapy or something. Like I just, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I continue to watch the show. It like infuriated me. And anyway, I watched that. Um, but I did manage to read about 100 pages. So I'm pretty proud of myself for at least doing that. I'll probably check in either later tonight when I get my books, my other books, um, and do a little quick unboxing with you guys or something. Or I will check in when I have more to update on this book. Hello friends! It's currently just past 10 o'clock. Um, I only just got home, I took a shower, um, but I've been hanging out with family all day. Um, haven't really done any reading. I read, I think, like three pages. But I did just get my package in the mail. Not really sure why Billie Eilish is on the box, but it's cool. It's fine. <laughs> um, but I thought I would do a quick little unboxing with you um, and then decide which of the two books I got I want to pick up tonight. Because I do want to pick up something that is not um, a fantasy, just for a bit of a change of pace. Um, I like to have multiple books on the go at any given time. So, all right. I did also pick up some descaling liquid. Oh, it smells so gross. Uh, <laughs> but for my, my hot water machine thingy. But okay, okay, okay. So this is the uh, Miracles of the Namiya General Store by Keiko Higashino. This is one of his non like mystery books. Um, and actually, I think a lot of people I saw this on quite a few people's um, best books of 2020 list. Actually, the movie came on my radar because I like one of the actors who um, is one of the lead characters in this. Um, and so I was interested in this and I wanted to read the book. Um, which is why I started looking it up online and I saw it on people's best of 2020 list. It's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, <laughs> the point is um, I've been waiting for the paperback to come out because I didn't want to buy a hardcover. Um, and it just came out, I think, a couple of weeks ago. But the other book I picked up was is the third book um, in the Galileo series. Well, it's not the third book, but it is the third book that is translated in English and it is A Midsummer's Equation. I have talked about the first two books already on my channel. I will link the wrap up um, where I do talk about those. I really like this series a lot. They're just like, kind of like police procedural type of mysteries. Um, and this is the third and the last one currently that is um, published in English. But anyway, I think I'm actually gonna end up buddy reading these with um, Nicole because I know that she already owns um, the Namiya General Store. Um, and I know that she has access to this on audio. So I think she's actually gonna be reading this one on audio. I'm kind of in the mood for a mystery. So I think I'm gonna start this one tonight, um, but I will probably check in with you guys tomorrow and let you know what I end up reading. Um, 
I did not read any of the Black Coast today. Um, but yeah, I'll check in tomorrow. I have no plans tomorrow other than to stay home. I'm going to try to film tomorrow, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what ends up happening. Um, but mostly just reading and chilling and probably playing a bit of Breath of the Wild. Um, and yeah, anyway, good night and I will see you tomorrow. friends happy Sunday um I lost my train of thought as soon as I started that I lost my train of thought oh thought I would do a quick check-in because I'm about a third of the way probably actually a little bit over a third of the way through um a Midsummer's Equation now um and I am loving this book honestly like I started reading it last night and I read about 50 pages and then I was like I'm gonna go to bed and then I went to brush my teeth and all that stuff. And then by the time I got to bed, I was like a little bit more awake than I was when I went to brush my teeth. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to read a little bit more before bed. And I, I think I texted Nicole because we're like trying to buddy read this a little bit. Um, I texted Nicole before I went to brush my teeth that I was on chapter nine, I think. And then by the time I like went to bed, I was already on chapter 17. And granted, the chapters are really short, which I think really helps with the pacing of this book. Um, but like, it's just so hard to put down. And now I'm on page 114. And I'm on chapter 21 now. And this book is about 300 and something odd pages 350 pages ish, give or take. Um, and it's really good. It's so good. In my last wrap up, I kind of gave the general premise of this, but it's basically like a procedural kind of like crime drama. Um, but our main character is actually a physicist. So Detective Galileo is actually a physicist, um, but he assists with like a lot of police cases. Um, and this book in particular takes place uh, not in Tokyo where they usually are um, but actually at, like in this small kind of um, beach town um, where a murder has occurred and Yukawa our, our physicist he just happens to be there for this conference type thing it's not really a conference I don't know what to call it um, but basically in that town some corporation is trying to propose this like new way of mining minerals in the ocean and um, some like local conservationists are trying to like protect the environment and trying to prevent that from happening. And Yukawa is actually there with the corporation to provide some sort of like phys like some scientific background on, on the methodology they're using. The point is that's kind of like the setup of why he's in this beach town um, when this murder happens to happen. I kind of like the like switch up of like the setting. Um, I think it provides like a really good um, refresh in terms of this series not feeling samey. Granted, I don't know what book this is in like, in terms of in Japan, I think this might be number six or seven or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but of course, this is only the third one that they translated into English. My cousin has actually watched the um, movie for Devotion of Suspect X. And she says it's really, really good. Um, I watched the J drama like, years ago. I don't know if I finished it, but I definitely started it. Um, and my mom, I'm pretty sure my mom watched it. And that's why I like have watched a few episodes of it. And that's kind of why I was interested in reading this one in particular. I mean, I won't lie, I got into I, I was like, inspired to read Keiko Higashino because Lino from Stray Kids was like, he's my favorite author. And I was like, I'm gonna check him out. And then I realized he wrote the Galileo series. And I was like, Oh, I like that J drama. So let me check this series out. Lo and behold, here we are now. I kind of feel like I might just like go back and watch the J drama again, or maybe I'll watch the movie for Devotion of Suspect X. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, I'm going to be reading this today. Um, I'm just, I'm really hooked. I kind of feel like I might be able to finish it today. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be reading this all day today. Um, and I will check in a little bit later, either when I have something to update or when I finish the book. I'm not really sure. Um, depends how today goes, I guess. Um, but yeah, that is it for this check-in and I will see you guys at the next one. Hello friends, quick check in. Um, I am currently on page 247. So I have about 100 pages left of A Midsummer's Equation. Hi Kava. Um, and I'm gonna read a little bit before bed. I don't know if I'll finish it tonight or not. Um, but it's getting so good. Like I'm just so intrigued. There's so many moving pieces. There's so much information and I just don't know how everything comes together. And I'm just like so intrigued. Um, I haven't read as much as I'd like. Come on, please. Come on.
I haven't quite read as much as I'd like for the day because I got a little distracted in the afternoon. I impromptu kind of started a new book book club kind of like on the whim. So I was doing a little planning for that. I was trying to get the discord set up for that. Um, but um, hopefully by the time this vlog goes up, I'll have another video talking about it already. But if not, the link to the discord will be in my description. Um, and basically, we're just going to be reading um, Chinese translated fiction. Um, it's just something that I realized that like, I don't read a lot of. Um, I realize that like a lot of the translated works I read are Japanese and while I really love them, um, I just want to read a little bit more from my own culture and um, explore more and learn more. And I just feel like I'm not doing enough in terms of reading translated Chinese works. Not that like I like need to do anything, but I don't know. I really, really want to read uh, in particular Romance of the Three Kingdoms and I actually like purchased that today because um, I found a used copy of the edition and the translation that I wanted. Um, and that's kind of what prompted this whole thing to begin with. So <laughs> here we are. Um, if you're interested in reading Chinese translated fiction with me, um, the Discord is down below. The first book is actually going to be another crime drama just because I've been loving the crime and mystery. Um, and I just want to continue on that streak. And there it has been um, like a Hong Kong crime drama that I have been meaning to read and it sounds really interesting. I'm really intrigued by it um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So hope you will join me at least for like a couple of months. You don't have to, it's really chill. Like if you don't wanna read that book that month, it's totally fine. Like it's, it's completely chill. I don't even know if I'm gonna do live shows or if we're just gonna like discuss the book in the Discord. But yeah, I guess I will check in with you guys tomorrow morning um, for the last day of this vlog and let you kind of know tomorrow my final thoughts on um, A Midsummer's Equation. Hello friends, good morning, happy Monday, Monday. Um, I do have today off um, and it is currently, I think like 11 o'clock um, and I just got out of bed um, and I just wanted to let you guys know that I did actually finish A Midsummer's Equation last night, oh well, this morning, I don't know, I stayed up till like 4 a.m. finishing it. I really, <laughs> I had about 100 pages left and I was gonna go to bed. And then I was like, I'm just going to read one more chapter. And the next thing you know, I had 50 pages left. And so I was just like, might as well finish it. Whatever. Um, but I finished it. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this one. Um, I think for me, it wasn't quite as good as the second one. A, just because I just prefer the format of the second one. Like I said in my... Uh, recent reads where I talked about the second one. I just really like locked room mysteries. So um, that's why I really like the second one so much. There was also like a plot line, like a subplot in here. Um, the whole like environmental thing. I don't know if I mentioned it, but there was like a whole environmental plot line, which I kind of just wish had a bigger role in the book and or was like a little bit more relevant. Like it was a little bit relevant, but not like completely. Um, so I didn't really love that. But the twists and turns at the end, like Kegel Higashino is just like, like, he's done it again. He's done it again. Like, his, the way that he makes you think that you know what's going on, and then you have absolutely no idea what's going on. Like, it's so, it's so good. I'm really upset that there's no more, like, Galileo books that are translated. Uh, I don't know if they're planning on doing more, but sad. Nicole and I actually successfully finished a buddy read. She actually finished it this morning. Well, this morning, my time. Um... And so we pretty much finished within like 12 hours of each other, uh, not even. So um, really excited that we, we managed to actually do a buddy read. And I think she really liked it as well. I believe she gave it four stars as well. But yeah, this was just such a fun read and such a nice like change from fantasy. Honestly, I, I don't know what it is about fantasy recently. Like I just have not been feeling the fantasies that I've been reading. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm not a fantasy reader anymore. What about that? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but anyway, I thought I would just end the vlog here. Since I finished this, I don't know what I'm going to be reading next. If I'm feeling a fantasy, I'll probably go back to the Black Coast, um, as I was really enjoying this one. Or today will be my uh, video game day. Like, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. So all that being said, I'm just going to end the vlog here. Um, and hopefully this was not too boring of a vlog. And I didn't do much, but... Anyway, um, if you stuck around to the end, thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Um, and if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you have been up to and what books have you, you've been reading um, in the last week. Or just leave me a mountain emoji. There's a little mountain here. And if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, and that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.